Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial we're going to be revisiting our most asked question or most asked question about a function which is the VLOOKUP function in Excel. But before we do that can we just ask you a really big favour, ask you to smash the like button on this video and also subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you're notified of all of our future videos as they come out. If you could give the video a like it's greatly appreciated because it not only helps us out to identify uh, what content you want to see more of, it also helps out the channel in terms of the YouTube algorithm. So obviously in our time we're going to reach more people and help more people to get the solutions that they need in Excel. So if you've done that just now, thank you very much. It is greatly appreciated. So the VLOOKUP function is probably one of the most common ones that are getting used day to day by many users, whether they're beginners or advanced users. And it's one of those ones that it just brings so much value and makes things so much easier when you're especially working with data and you need to merge particular data sets together. For our example, we're going to look at quickly here. You can see we've got some source data uh, in this range here of ID, first name and surname. And we just created ourselves a sort of basic skeleton table over the left hand side here. So we've got three of those IDs and for those IDs we want to pull through the first name and the surname. So we're going to jump straight in with using the function. In order to do so you just need to hit your equal symbol and then do the VLOOKUP or type VLOOKUP and then hit open brackets and you will get the prompts to everything we need to provide into our VLOOKUP function. So the first thing we need to do is select our lookup value. For us, it's going to be the ID because it's a unique identifier in both uh, the set we have on the left here and our data set in which we want to source data from. So once we've selected that, the next thing we're asked to do is provide the table array. So the table array is just selecting all of the data that you wish to look or search for your lookup value in and return another piece of data that corresponds with that value. For us, all we need to do is just select this table here of ID through to surname from the first to the last row. And all I'm going to do is just use uh, the dollar symbol in front of the column and the number for each the start and end cell reference. That will just lock that range so as we drag our formula down later on, it will always make sure that this uh, our table array remains the same. I'm going to hit column. I uh, have it comma, sorry. We move on to the column index number. So as you'll see above our range here, or our table array to keep it consistent, I've put the numbers one to three. So what those numbers relate to is the columns within our table array. So ID is classed as number one, first name is classed as number two, and surname is classed as the column index number three for our range or our table array. So for us, we want to pull back the first name. So all we need to do here is enter the number two to indicate to our function that having found our ID, so ID 02, it'll come down here in the first column and it'll then move across to identify the name Hannah being the second, uh, or the second column index number that we wish to return our value. So once we've done that, we can hit comma again. And lastly, we just need to enter a true or false value here uh, to indicate to our function how we want to search for our ID. So we can either have an exact max, uh, exact match or an approximate match. So we always advise using the exact, especially when you're getting started, because it will ensure that it finds an exact match of your ID in your search range here, rather than something that could be uh, less than or greater than or be slightly a match to our desired value. So all we're going to do here is enter the word false and close our brackets. Okay, and then having done that, you can see that our first name of Hannah is now populated correctly into our first name column. If we now pull that formula down, you can see that our um, our range remains the same and locked to G5 to I11, but each of those first names are being updated as we pull it down. The real quick way to then try and to get the surname is all we need to do here is simply copy the formula we've put in already, move across the surname, and then populate that into uh, the, uh, the desired column of column C and hit enter. So at the moment you can see we've got Hannah in both the first and the surname. All we need to do to jump across the pool surname is change the column index number, which is this time going to be three for the surname. So all we need to do is just change the two to a three, hit enter, copy that formula down, and you can see we've now successfully pulled through the first name and the surname. So that's great, and obviously it's when we've got data in the same sheet. But what if you want to pull data through to our table? And let's say, let's put in here phone, as in phone number, 
Let's say we want to pull through phone number, but it's not within the same sheet. It's in a different sheet within Excel. All we need to do is we can see in VLOOKUP2 sheet that we've got a slightly different data set here. And we've got the ID, name, surname, but this time we've also got a phone number. And excuse the number what's presented there, it's just a random number generation just so we've got something to pull through. So all we need to do this time is the same equals VLOOKUP, open brackets, select our lookup value what's going to be exactly the same because it's uh, obviously still the ID, hit comma. And then this time our table array is in a different sheet. So all you really need to do, having got to this stage of the VLOOKUP function, is navigate to your second sheet, highlight um, the same, your table array. But for what I'm going to do, you can literally just uh, highlight each of those columns because there's no data uh, beneath or above our data range that's going to conflict with our search results. Do comma. And, and this time phone in this table here is going to be the fourth column. So all you need to do is enter number four and lastly enter the word false so that we get an exact match. And once we do that, we can pull this information down and we can see that it's successfully pulled through a number for us. So to do a quick check, let's look for ID4. It should be Claire Smith and it's 98764. Let's find Claire Smith 98764. So it's pulled it through exactly as we require. So there you go. That's a really quick look at how to use the VLOOKUP function in a couple of examples. We hope that did answer any questions that you do have. But obviously, if it didn't answer your questions and there's anything we're missing or we're maybe skipping over, drop us a comment below this video or reach out to us by one of the links in the description for this video. So those are Facebook and Instagram. And they're also great platforms as well to be identified of when new videos are coming out onto the channel. So once again, if you haven't already, please do give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. So obviously you receive all of those future videos. And obviously again, as we mentioned earlier, giving the video a like will be greatly appreciated by us. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in the next video.